Well, let's get more now from Sarah Coates. Joining us uh, live from uh, Tel Aviv, uh, Sarah Hezbollah says it's uh, ended phase one of the operation against Israel. Uh, is there a phase two? What could that look like? Hello there, Jill. Very uncertain times here in the region. You just mentioned that Hezbollah is threatening that there will be another round, although it remains unclear as to what that will actually entail. Now, right now, Israel's top security brass, including the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, they are holding high-level talks, really trying to figure out actually what has been damaged here and how to go forward. We do, of course, know uh, that the US is uh, coordinating with Israel on the back of uh, this morning's events, but it's certainly very eerie here on the ground. Uh, we are hearing, of course, that some of these rockets were primed to launch at Tel Aviv. These are rocket launches that the IDF did say that it destroyed in the uh, early hours of the morning. Now, while people are out on the beaches here behind me. Most of the beaches further north this way, they remain closed and people have been told to stay very, very close to shelter. Now, in addition to that, a number of airlines, carriers that were still actually flying in and out of both Tel Aviv and also Beirut airports, they have cancelled and suspended their flights until further notice. So it is a very uh, strange time on the ground. People mm. have been out buying more supplies just in case uh, this does actually escalate any further. But certainly it remains unclear as to what could happen going forward. But we may know a little bit more when the head of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, does actually have this televised address in just a few hours' time, mm. Jill. All right. Uh, what is clear, though, Sarah, is the flurry of diplomatic activity amid fears of a wider war. What and can the international community do to de-escalate this? Really, the only thing, Jill, that is being seen now as something that could bring down tensions in the region is actually a ceasefire in Gaza. Now, these talks are ongoing in Cairo. We can report that while a Hamas delegation isn't actively involved in these talks, there is a delegation on hand that will be speaking to mediators after the day wraps up. But some fairly urgent warnings are coming from right around the globe. We've, of course, heard from the United Kingdom. Uh, it says it's very concerned, or urging all parties for de-escalation. Also, Egypt's foreign ministry warning against the danger of opening a new front in Lebanon, calling for stability. Now, Hamas and the Houthis, they've both put out statements celebrating this latest attack. While UNIFIL, which is, of course, the United Nations interim peacekeeping force there in Lebanon, it is calling for an urgent ceasefire. And once again, this is really being seen as the only thing that can pull tensions down in the region. But we do need to remember, of course, there is this one main sticking point mm. that we've been seeing time and time again, Jill, and that is Israel's presence on the Philadelphia Corridor. That is that very narrow stretch of land that separates Egypt and Gaza, and one that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that he refuses to pull troops from, saying that this could be used for weapon smuggling from Egypt into Gaza. So really, this is a, a time of a lot of uncertainty here in the region as people really brace for what happens next, although in saying that, nobody here knows what will actually happen next, Jill. Sarah, thank you. Uh, Sarah Coates, uh, keeping an eye on the situation for us from Tel Aviv.